Listen, man, the hair is gone. A lot of it fell off this past weekend. I don't know what happened. I'm a little sad. I'm sure you can tell my voice, but that doesn't matter. We're going to keep this thing pushing. We still got content on the way. Hair or not, this is not a Samson situation. We still got the power. We still got the juice running through our veins. We still got the content flowing like crazy. So with that being said, you know what time it is. It's another episode for who is that underrated dynasty asset. And I'm going to take some of your feedback into consideration. I'm not going to say who it is straight off the bat. I'm going to give you some stats and some facts and stuff like that. Then I'm going to give you some time to write who you think it is in the comment section. Then I'm going to do the big reveal. And then we get back at the table, a little round table discussion, shout out Arthur and the Knights. We're going to just, we're going to talk through it. We're going to give a little more analysis and a little more personality other than numbers, just straight off a piece of paper. So before we get into the video, give this a thumbs up. If you think you'll like it, give it a thumbs down. If you think you won't. And then at the end of the video, we can reevaluate, do a little post test and you can stay true to your thumbs up or thumbs down, or you can change it based on the way this video turns out. Don't give me the thumbs down because the hair is gone. Because if that's the case, there's going to be a whole lot of thumbs down flowing in over these next few months because it's, it's going to take a while for it to get back to where it was. But fear not, we're bike with more content. So let's hit the intro. Who is that? Underrated wide receiver. All right, folks. Hint number one. He's a wide receiver. Shocking. And also gave away his gender. Although I don't want to get caught up in the whole gender debates or whatever he's an nfl wide receiver we'll leave it at that that's hint number one i'm sure you could tell by both the title and the thumbnail and whatever else that he was a wide receiver so let's let's get that out the way let's pass that around bounce that out of here like steve nash number two he is only one of 25 receivers in nfl history to have a thousand receiving yards in five of his first seven seasons at least five of his first seven seasons and of those 25 only four have done it and kept that streak alive through their first seven seasons for more than one team the other names on that list that played for more than one team in the first seven seasons to do that brandon marshall who did it on three separate teams odell beckham jr who played on two separate teams during his first seven seasons and Amari Cooper, who played for obviously the Raiders and the Cowboys during his first seven seasons. So those are the guys who put up a thousand yards in five of their first seven seasons, but had done it while playing for different teams during those seven years. Might be a bit confusing the way I worded that, but I'm sure once the player is announced, you'll know who I'm talking about. To go along with these 1,000 yard seasons, he has also averaged over 11.3 fantasy points per game in six of seven seasons. So he has been a high-end producer. And looking at his fantasy finishes on a point-per-game basis in half PPR, in six of seven years, his finishes have been the wide receiver 26, which was his rookie year, wide receiver 17, 10, 15, 16, and 17, 17 being this past year. And obviously, within those years, there was guys that played like two games and put up 25 points a game. Shout out to Sean Jackson. So that's just among players who played at least 10 games in each of those years, which this player did do. So he meets that threshold as well. Basically saying he's finished outside the top 26 only once in his seven-year career, and he has finished outside the top 17 only twice. So he has finished 17, 16, 15, 10, 17, five times. Yet, right now, he's been taken as the wide receiver 42 in Dynasty. Keep in mind, he's only 27 years old. Fact number, I don't know. It gets tough for me after I count to like four. I'm going to say fact number four. This past season, only he, DK Metcalf, DJ Moore, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, and Robbie Anderson were wide receivers who ranked inside the top 20 in both deep targets and yards after the catch. Not only were they used in the deep game where you can pick up chunk yardage, but they also proved that they can be used in the short game or even in the deep game and pick up yards after the catch and kind of do work on their own, showing that they're not only situation dependent by depending on those deep balls, but they can kind of be a situation independent if a quarterback change were to happen hint hint because they can do their work after the catch and that's a pretty good group to be in right dk metcalf dj moore tyree kill justin jefferson all those guys other than maybe dj moore are like top five dynasty wide receivers and obviously this guy is 27 years old that i'm talking about so he's a little bit older so he's not going to be in that same ilk of wide receivers i love saying that word and i don't know if i ever say it right he's not in that same conversation being taken as the wide receiver 42 off the board but he produced pretty well this year. And in terms of efficiency, he was right alongside those guys. Another point in this guy's favor is the touchdown dependency or the touchdown variance that he faced this year. 
prior to this season, he had scored 36 touchdowns, 17 of which came from inside the 20. So from the 19 and in, he scored one on the 20 yard line, but I'm like, oh, let's let's leave that out of there. So the numbers seem a little bit worse than they are. So basically a little bit under half of his total career touchdowns have come from inside the 20 yard line. This year, only one of six of his receiving touchdowns came from inside the 20. And we want to talk about touchdown luck. He was tackled inside the five yard line three times. So he scored six times on the year. Could he have scored nine times? Probably. Should he have? Who knows? Maybe he was tackled exactly on the five or maybe he got lucky and got there. Either way, it's not like he got into the end zone six times by a stroke of luck. There was three other chances where he was tackled inside the five where he was basically about to find pay dirt and he didn't get in. So the touchdown luck, although wasn't there on his side, he's shown to be pretty consistent in hauling in touchdowns despite his stature and despite the type of role that you would expect him to fill. And lastly, since this is dynasty, we want to talk about longevity. I did bring up his age. 27 isn't necessarily a death knell. That's not the end of a wide receiver's career. We saw guys like Hopkins and Devontae Adams and other guys around that age, Adam Thielen, Stefan Diggs around that age, continue to produce. But we also got to look at their own situation. And when you do, it's pretty easy to see that right now he is by far and away the number one guy on that depth chart. He's the only pass catcher on his team that is under contract for 2021. He is on contract beyond that. But for this year, he's the only one on the team under contract that has put up at least 450 yards in more than one of their past three seasons. Only one other receiver on the team has even hit that mark in their past three years, but he did so on a completely different team. So basically what I'm saying is this wide receiver is the only guy on the team that is under contract, has longevity on this team that has been productive in recent memory. So those are all the hints. I feel like by the thumbnail and these hints as well, you can probably guess who it is. If you can guess, drop it down below. We're going to hit a little cut scene. Hopefully I know how to edit it. And then we'll talk about the player thereafter. Who is that? Underrated wide receiver. It's Brandon motherfucking Cooks, baby. All right, if you guessed it, you guessed it. If you didn't, no hard feelings as always next time. It's Brandon Cooks, wide receiver of the Houston Texans. Now I brought up the whole Brandon Marshall, Odell, Amari thing, and I know it was kind of confusing. What I was just trying to get at was, you know, through seven seasons, he's played on four teams, drafted by the Saints, traded to the Patriots, traded to the Rams, then traded to Houston, four separate teams. He's put up a thousand yards on each and every one of them. The only years he didn't put up a thousand yards, his rookie year where he played 10 games. He wasn't on pace for a thousand yards, I don't believe, but he still finishes the wide receiver 26 that year. And then in 2019, when everybody hopped off the bandwagon because he did suffer those concussions and everybody thought his career was over and he was in a pretty stacked wide receiver room with Robert Woods and Cooper Cup. Now he finds himself in Houston. I did hint at there being potential for a quarterback change because of Deshaun Watson's unhappiness and uneasiness with the Texans front office. If that does happen, I would be a little bit worried for Brandon Cooks, but then again, if Watson leaves, that means they're probably getting a pretty big bag in return. We're hearing about Carson Wentz demanding two first-round picks for him. We saw what Matt Stafford got in return. If Deshaun Watson leaves, you better believe they're probably getting a good quarterback or at least a serviceable quarterback in the deal, plus multiple first-round picks. Maybe those materialize into wide receivers, those first-round picks, but what Brandon Cooks has shown throughout his entire career, his seven-year career to this point, is basically when he isn't hampered by injuries, which happened in two years, he's almost a locked-in top 15, top 16 wide receiver. He's not as flashy as a Tyreek Hill who can like blow up and win you a week. He's not as dominant as Devontae Adams, who's going to catch you 24, 30, a million touchdowns and give you a floor of about 15, 16, 20, a million points a week. But what he is, is a consistent wide receiver who can have those boom games, but also gives you some pretty solid floor games as well. Isn't completely reliant on touchdowns. I know I had the touchdown stat earlier. He's never been a double digit touchdown type of guy, but he's always had a floor of around six, seven touchdowns this year. He scored six. And as I mentioned, he had a few moments of unluckiness where he was tackled inside the five yard line, which could have or could have not turned into touchdowns. Either way, a floor of six touchdowns and around 1,000 to 1,100 yards is pretty, pretty, pretty solid being the wide receiver 42 off the board i know it's hard in dynasty to rank these guys who are a little bit older and by older i mean 27 28 29 years old it's hard to rank them inside your top 30 because you have guys like judy who haven't really proven anything but are super young that if they do prove something this year you're obviously going to want them ahead of brandon cooks but at the same time brandon cooks has just been such a reliable producer and a few years back right when you're doing your startup drafts like i don't have the data in front of me and i wasn't even really heavy into dynasty back then i don't know exactly when he was going off the board but I would assume he was around that wide receiver 12 to wide receiver 15 draft spot, kind of where a DJ Moore would be right now, kind of where maybe a Brandon Ayuk is right now because a 25-year-old receiver like Brandon Cooks with the profile that he had 
where at that point he hadn't dealt with many concussions and he had produced on two or three teams. It's a coveted asset to have in Dynasty. And the fact that he has played with really good quarterbacks, whether it's Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Deshaun Watson, Jared Goff is the only probably below average one. But the fact that he's thrived in as many systems as he did, the Saints, he was mainly just a deep threat early on. He shared the field with guys like Willie Sneed, who are running out of the slot, Michael Thomas, who's just a big body kind of ex-possession receiver. And then even when Kenny Stills was there, he was still running deep a lot. On the Rams, he kind of functioned in that same role, but he was a little bit more versatile. On the Patriots, obviously, they don't throw the ball as deep as many other teams do. He was still used in that facet of the game but he was more of a Swiss army knife type of receiver there. And then obviously this past year, he's kind of playing second fiddle to a guy like Will Fuller, who also dominates in the deep part of the game. He has just shown a nice bag of skills where he can dip in there be like, okay, I'm going to run a route over the middle. Okay. I'm going to run a corner. Okay. I'm going to go deep. Okay. I'm going to be using the screen game. He has such a all around well-versed game as to where if he does get a different quarterback or if he gets traded again or what have you, I think he's going to succeed because to this point in his career, that's all he's ever done. And if we look at a few of the receivers drafted ahead of him that I would much rather prefer Brandon Cooks to, a guy like Odell, the wide receiver 37 off the board, Odell's a little bit older. He has been more consistently banged up than him. And if both stay in their current situations, I would much prefer Brandon Cooks being tethered to a Deshaun Watson than an Odell Beckham Jr. on a run heavy type of offense. Other guys too. There's not much of a difference, in my opinion, between Brandon Cooks and Tyler Lockett. And I would probably prefer a guy like Brandon Cooks, who is also slightly younger, might not have the same fit that Tyler Lockett has with Russell Wilson. Their chemistry is crazy. But what we've seen over the past few years is it's kind of a tale of two halves for Tyler Lockett, where this year over the first, what, six, seven, eight weeks of the year, he was the wide receiver two or three because of that huge game. And then he fell off and he's basically unusable for most of the season. I would prefer Brandon Cooks to Tyler Lockett, who is currently the wide receiver 35 per DLF's ADP. Other guys ahead of him as well. Not that I would prefer Brandon Cooks to him, but DJ Chark all the way up at wide receiver 25. I get that he's going to have Trevor Lawrence slinging on the ball, but are we sure that with a brand new offense with Urban Meyer coming in, a rookie quarterback, the fact that they did just spend a second round pick on LaVisca Chanel, are we sure that DJ Chark is a clear cut alpha that can dominate in the face of legitimate target competition? The year he broke out, Wide receiver two, there was D.D. Westbrook and then fucking Leonard Fournette. Brandon Cooks has produced in the face of guys like Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, this past year with Will Fuller. Obviously, in New England, they had a guy like Rob Gronkowski there. He also shared a field with Willie Sneed and Michael Thomas and Kenny Still. So he's faced legit target competition. So I think give me Brandon Cooks over, not over D.J. Chark, but the disparity in price. D.J. Chark, the 52nd player off the board. Brandon Cooks, the 81st. Mental math. 29 spots after him i would probably prefer brandon cooks at that two and a half round discount and then other guys in that range as well like a tyler boyd wide receiver 27 also going 25 spots ahead of him and then guys closer in adp michael Pittman going 79th overall so two spots ahead of him give me brandon cooks there Corey davis going two spots ahead of him give me brandon cooks there there's just a lot of guys that i would prefer to brandon cooks and usually i can't say that with the wide receiver position usually my argument is basically oh it's so deep just keep waiting and waiting waiting and get another guy But at this point, honestly, I prefer Brandon Cooks straight up to a lot of these guys who are going much earlier than him. So let me know your feelings on Brandon Cooks in the comments below. Let me know if you drafted him in the 12th round this past offseason in Stardust because so many people were low on him uh, given all of his concussions as of late. And let me know what you guys want to see in the future. I do have another one of these lined up for a running back. So stay tuned for that. But if there's any other type of video you're looking forward to, give it a shout in the comments. I read all the comments. I try to respond to all the comments if they're worthy of a response and not in like a a condescending way more so if it's like if it's a question i'll answer if it's a statement and i have nothing witty to say to it i'll kind of leave it to the wolves but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed hopefully my hair doesn't get too much of a roasting session in the comments below but if it does you know it builds it builds a little character and i'm, I'm here for that so hope you guys enjoyed we got bunk bed breakdowns coming out tomorrow the narrative thursday top shot thursday also and then maybe another one of these videos coming friday so so we'll see you guys around oh and also this is the point of the video where you get to decide whether you remain a thumbs up or it changes to a thumbs down or vice versa. It won't hurt my feelings either way. Just be honest with yourself. And if you're honest with yourself and you're honest with me, it's a good life. You can't be happy at that. So we'll see you guys around. And I'm out. Foolies glad I'm on. Even my haters kind of glad I'm on. Rest in peace to my bag up on. Rap a song, singer, suspended subpoena from Mr. Meaner's dreamer. Hell back asses, Loki still a deer. And I still shake a bow squat. Ram on my broke, got city on the come.